All right, everyone, we're doing a tutorial today on how to get you from Onshape into Bamboo Studio so we can print with the bamboo printers. Um, you got a couple of bamboo printers, so there's kind of two options, but I'll show you that in a second. So here we are. Uh, as you may know, Michigan just won a national championship, so I'm a little biased here. Uh, but I was thinking about making a little stand to hold a football. So here's what I got there. Uh, so a couple ways you can first pull your um, STL file from Onshape. First, you can get it straight from your part. So in this case, I got two parts being shown here. So I want the stand. I'll right click on it and go to export. And that's what we're going to export to STL. Uh, the other thing I would actually probably recommend is if you don't usually come over here to workspace units. And I like to change this to millimeters because most 3D printing softwares are going to default to millimeters. So I might as well have it ready for that. So check that, and then you can again get it from this part, or if you want to do the entire uh, part studio, then you can click on it down here and export the entire part studio down here. All right, but for us, I'm just grabbing this one part out of my studio. So I'm going to come in here to X, right click, export. And most of these settings I already have done, but you may need to change this. Make sure the key ones are, make sure this is STL. And then again, changes to millimeters, assuming you changed your workspace units to millimeters, resolution fine, and then we're gonna download it. So then hit export, and it will automatically download to your downloads folder. Next up, we're going to your desktop. Assuming you're on a school desktop, it should be on there already. If you're using your own computer, then you may need to download Bamboo Studio. It is free to download, so feel free to do that. Um, just you know, Google search Bamboo Studio and you can find it. All right, like I said, if you're on a school computer, then it'll already be on there. Double click on that, and it will pull up this screen, or at least it should. Uh, something along these lines. Next, what we're going to do is come over here to New Project. <clears throat> okay, clicking on New Project, uh, there might be some settings that may be preset. You can transfer those, not a big deal. All right, at this point, a couple of key settings. First off, in the top left hand corner, right, there should be a couple options. The black 3D printers that we have, the P1S. Okay, uh, again, I'll pull up a picture of that real quick, just so you know what you're dealing with. Uh, most of you guys are going to be printing to the P1S. Okay, and it's really, really important that you choose the right printer because depending on the printer, uh, sizing is a little bit different. So the one that you are looking for, uh, that most of you will be printing to, will look something like this. Okay, again, it's got the black shell. It's a plastic shell as opposed to the X1C that we have, which while I'm kind of on this screen, we'll pull up X1C, has the silver metal um, shell or casing to it. Uh, ours also has the AMS, the automatic mixing system. So I'll cover that as well in this video. But for the most part, like I said, most of you guys will be printing to the P1S since we've got three of those. Okay, so I'm going to change that here. P1S 0.4 nozzle. And also plate type, we use the textured PEI plate. It makes it really easy to uh, remove your prints afterwards. Okay, here's kind of the good part. Add, this is where you're going to bring in your STL file. So hit that plus with the box next to it. Come over here to downloads is where we just downloaded it. And then here's that STL file. Okay, hit open, and again, it should be sized about right. Remember, the print bed here is approximately about a foot square, uh, so you can kind of get a feel for how big your piece is going to be. If it's coming out really, really small, then there's a good chance that you didn't change the units properly, or maybe you just didn't scale it properly, in which case you'll either change it back in your part, or if you want to come over here to uh, this button right here, you'll hit that scale button, you can change it, you know, if you want it twice as big, then you'll change it to 200%. Or if you know the exact size of one of the uh, X, Y, or Z measurements, then you can plug that in in terms of millimeters. Okay. Generally, we'll keep the uniform scale. That way, it'll do the sizing for every direction. Okay. Uh, next thing we'll typically want to do is, right now, the way you'll print, you'll notice that there's this kind of big gap. We'll probably have to do a bunch of supports. So prefer not to. I always ch check this auto-orient and it'll kind of figure out which way is best for you. If you want to manually do it, click on your part, come over here to rotate, and you can rotate it based on whatever direction you think is best. Okay, so for this example, I'm actually going to bring this back down to 90. Let's do some weird orientation. That way I can show you supports. Okay, so for some parts, it may not have an obvious 
way to orient that will print really well without supports. So if that's the case, let's say this was my part, notice I got a bunch of interior things here, interior overhangs, things that will probably not print very well on its own. So come over here to support, <clears throat> click on enable support, and I would recommend playing around with this tree support, right? It has a couple of options, but tree auto is usually pretty good for what we're trying to do. And I'll show you what tree supports kind of look like here. Okay, so I'll go to slice plate now that I've got tree support enabled. And it'll do a little bit of work in the background here. And now I can kind of see how it's going to fill in my support. So notice it's got these little things that look like trees coming around the edges and it'll help hold the interior parts. And these are just a little bit easier to break off. Okay, but like I said, generally speaking, we're probably going to want to keep this uh, so that as much as possible, we don't have to use supports. So I'm going to come back here to prepare tab, click on this. Let's go into auto orient. And again, this is probably a better direction. Notice if, if I go slice now, then it won't have any of those supports because it's not necessary. Okay, but as much as possible, if you can try to plan so that you don't need to use supports either in the orientation or when you actually go build your parts, kind of keep that in mind. Okay, a couple of things you might keep track of here, total print time. So this one's gonna take about two and a half hours. Uh, you can see the total amount of filament uh, is about 126 grams, something like that. Okay, so the cost would be give or take $3.17. All right, last thing uh, here, I'm gonna go over here to export the plate. All right, and we're gonna export it because uh, we don't have all the computers are not linked uh, to the cloud for the bamboo printers. So you're gonna have to grab this little micro SD card from the printers. Uh, you'll plug that into a USB port. If you need help with that, let me know. But uh, you hit export. Once you have that USB drive plugged in, which I have it plugged in here as USB drive D, you know, you can save it to whatever you want it to. I already saved mine earlier to football stand. It should save it as a file .gcode.3mf in order for you to send to the bamboo printers. All right, once you have that, hit save. You'll bring your SD card over to the printer, plug it in, find the print file, and then you should be good to go. Okay, okay, at this point, that's ready for the P1S. The other part, if you're gonna use the X1C with the AMS, meaning the automatic mixing system, what you're gonna do differently is come over to X1C. You'll notice the X1C, the AMS has, for us, we have four filaments that you can kind of plug in and um, play around with. So you can print multiple colors all at once. So the fun part for that is doing some painting. So let's say here's my part again. Let's say I want the M portion to be maize or yellow so it actually matches the school colors. And what I'll do is come over here to this color painting. Uh, I like to choose this one as a fill. Again, really helps if you properly did this in your modeling so you have nice flat clear edges of where your coloring would go. Um, if not, you can do it more as like uh, different shapes. So that's kind of just like painting randomly. Um, but like I said, as much as possible, fill is the way to go. So I would choose the other color, click on the surface. I want it to be a different color. I can do all these interior edges. Uh, you can play around with that depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, so again, this was just an example. Once I've got that ready, I'll click off from it. And you can see here, I'll do this little color block. So what colors you're gonna use. Uh, when you're in the AMS, generally I try to match whatever colors in the same slots. Uh, it does do kind of this automatic guessing depending on what color you, it thinks you want to do. Um, so it does pretty good with that. Again, we'll hit slice plate, export, uh, and then you'll plug it into the X1C instead of the P1S. The only difference. All right. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the video tutorial. As always, if you need help, questions, let me know.